Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. Hey, you guys actually showed a lot of good and positive response to the Ohm's Law video I posted not long ago. And honestly, I'm freaking jazzed that a lot of you like this stuff as much as I do. Heck, I thought I was the only nut on YouTube that actually looked for this kind of stuff instead of videos of dancing cats, you know? <laughs> well, hey, today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into Ohm's Law and talk about the correlation with wattage or power, how that goes together and some real world situations where you might actually use this stuff. Let's take a look at the bench and see what we got going on. All right guys, full disclosure, I have done a video about this in the past, but whenever I did that, I was still pretty green to this YouTube thing. And frankly, the video kind of sucked. So I'm gonna use the same situation because I feel like it's a good learning scenario. But we're gonna do this again, and I'm gonna try to do it a little bit better. So let's say that you're rolling down the aisle at the depot, and you find yourself this awesome electric heater on sale for like $49.95 and it's advertised 2,000 watt heater. As of right now, you don't really know what that means. You just see a high number with a low cost and you're like, hey man, that's gonna be great. When I get back home, the old lady's gonna love me. I'm gonna plug this into the living room. Everybody's gonna be happy. However, being naive to this number could really cost you. So whenever we find power, Power is wattage. That's how this works. The watt is the form of how we measure electrical power. And to find a watt, you take the volts times the amps, and that gives you your wattage. So here in North America, a regular standard wall outlet is 120 volts AC at 60 Hertz. And most common, I say most common, electrical outlets here in North America are 15 amp circuits. So we know our volts and our amps. So that can give us our wattage. So we take 120 times 15, and that gives us our 1800 watts. So this tells me right off the bat at the outlet at the wall, this is the maximum amount of wattage that I can supply. Now you putting two and two together here, that means this fancy new 49.95 heater that I got from Home Depot isn't gonna fly. It's gonna pop the breaker as soon as I plug it in. Now another nifty way to figure this out, if you want a little less longhand math, to do the exact same thing, we just do the inverse of that same equation. So we take our 2000 watt heater in question, and then we divide it by our available voltage, because this is our wall outlet, and this is the heater we're trying to plug into it. Now we get an answer of 16.67 amps. This number here is higher than our available 15 amps at that outlet, which another way automatically tells you that this heater requires more power than we have available at the outlet we're trying to plug this into. Now you may be asking yourself, hey Dan, how does all this crap go together in an industrial setting? How does this help with Diag? Yada, 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 how does this work? Well, we have these things. These are called mica heaters. These go on plastic injection machines and heat up the barrel. These allow us to melt the material so we can inject into molds. These are a super common thing I deal with all the time on a daily basis in my job. And we always have to check the health of these things because they do go bad. So let me show you an example of something I did just a couple days ago that this exact formula in correlation with Ohm's Law helped me determine whether this thing was good or bad and saved me a whole lot of time in diagnostics. So if you guys can see here on this electric heater, we have a couple notations here of the values of this heater. It's 120 volt at 450 watts. 
and the rest is just the part number and the manufacturer date. So this doesn't give us a whole lot of information, but given what we have just learned, this is more than enough information to tell me the health of this heater without actually plugging it in. So how do we handle this situation? We have wattage and we have voltage, but we need to check this thing without physically plugging it into the machine. Well, we know from what we've just learned, wattage is volts times amps equals wattage. Okay, so we have our voltage. How do we find our amperage? We do the inverse of this equation. We take our known wattage at 450 and we divide it by our known voltage at 120. This answer gives you your amperage. So now we can fill out our Ohm's law triangle because we have volts and we have amps. So at the top where the voltage would go, 120. Down here where the current would be, 3.75. And that leaves us with a question mark of resistance. Now to find resistance, you simply cover the segment that you're looking for and do the equation that's left over. In this situation, 120 divided by 3.75. And that gives us an answer of 32 ohms. And that will tell us if this heater is in good health. So why don't we just break out the trusty fluke here, set it on ohm, and see what we get for a value versus our math. Go ahead and take our leads here. Look at that, 35. I don't know about you guys, but that is close enough for me. It isn't a coincidence that this works. Math actually helps diagnose electrical circuits. And now I know for sure, without ever plugging this thing into a power source or connecting it to a machine, simply from doing this equation, I know that this heater will work and is in good health because the electrical circuit inside of here provides the correct amount of resistance for the power that it is made to handle. Hey guys, hopefully I did a little bit better job this time around. I know this can get kind of deep whenever you get into doing formulas and inverse equations and everything, but honestly, this isn't that bad. And the whole electric heater thing at the beginning of the video can really save your butt. If you don't know what you're buying, you don't know what you're gonna end up with. And it's super awesome to know how to do these equations on the fly. So whenever you pick up something like a generator or an electric heater that's rated in wattage, you know what you're getting before you actually get it. So remember, wattage is voltage times amperage. You take your available stuff, times it together, and that will give you your wattage. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, please drop a comment and let me know. Until next time.